Shalom family, this is Yuda Yashorel back again. I know I said I wasn't going to test this again, but I have a job to do and that decision is not up to me. I got to obey just like you. So here we are. My people shall perish from the lack of knowledge. Zephaniah chapter 2 verses 1 to 2. Gather yourselves together. Yea, gather together, O nation not desired. <clears throat> before the decree brings forth, before the day passes as the chafe, before the fierce anger of the Lord comes upon you, before the day of the Lord's anger come upon you. What is Zephaniah talking about? Zephaniah has peeped all the way into the present day. And he's warning you to get out. He's warning you to get out before the anger of the Most High comes down upon you. It ain't got nothing to do with the people saying that, oh, well, we're going to wait on the Most High because when he... He's going to gather us up out of here and we're going to leave with, with, a, with a great substance. Well, I got news for you. There won't be no substance. The American or the U.S. dollar is already zilched out. You won't be getting no gold and silver. What you will get is death. Let's move on so I can show you. Zephaniah is warning, warning Israel about the future event that's coming upon us. He's warning us to flee Babylon before the anger of the Creator comes upon us. He's not talking about Egypt. He's talking about the last captivity, Babylon. Let's look at Jeremiah chapter 51 and verse 6. Flee out of the midst of Babylon. And see, I had somebody write in and leave, leave a comment. Says, oh, uh, ACH. The scripture says that we should wait because if we deliver ourselves, then the Most High won't get the glory. Well, sorry to tell you, bud, but that's incorrect. Every man saves his own soul. Flee out of the midst of Babylon and deliver every man his own soul. Be not cut off in her iniquity, for this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. He will render unto her recompense. If you are in that land, and listen, I'm not trying to beat anybody's horse. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm trying to complete my job, and I'm trying to show you what he's saying. You Obviously, these two people that wrote in, obviously they read, but they're not connecting the dots. They're trying to tie the first exodus into the coming exodus. And those two won't fit. Because they're saying, well, in the first exodus, he led Israel out with a great substance. He sure did. All the cattle, livestock, jewelry, earrings, gold and silver. They, Israel, asked the Egyptians. They asked them, can we have this stuff? And they, the Mosai, gave favor to Israel with the Israelites, I mean with the Egyptians. So yeah, they left with a great substance and the biggest part of that substance was the Most High because everything on the planet would not exist without the Most High. So who is the real substance? The Most High. Exodus chapter 12, verse 33 and 37, and I'm gonna read partials. The Egyptians were urgent with the people to send them out of the land. Why? Because they were scared they were going to be killed. For they said, we shall all be dead. So the people took their dough before it was leavened, their kneading bowls being bound up in their cloaks on their shoulders. The people of Israel had also done as Moses told them. For they had asked the Egyptians for silver and gold, jewelry and for clothing. And the Lord had given the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. So they let them have whatever they asked. And here was the, here's the key word. Thus they plundered the Egyptians. The plundering here is the great substance during their leaving Egypt. Not Babylon. Anyone who believes the creator says to wait is in serious error. 
The wait was during the Egyptian time period when they had to wait until the Most High demonstrated his power so Israel could witness this event and know that it's the Most High who is delivering them, not Moses. Moses only led them. He did not deliver them. They waited until all ten plagues were completed and then they left. So this exodus that people are using to justify staying in the, in the U.S. of Babylon, these two are different. I want to show you what happened with Abraham when this prophecy came to him. But let me finish with verse 37. And the people of Israel journeyed from Ramses to Sokoth, about 600,000 men on foot, besides women and children. A mixed multitude also went up with them, and very many livestock, both flocks and herds, that's your substance. And they baked unleavened cakes of the dough that they had brought out of Egypt, for it was not leavened, because they were thrust, they were thrust, they were thrust out of Egypt, and they could not wait, nor had they prepared any provisions for themselves. The gold and silver and also the clothes and other things Israel was given by the Egyptians, including livestock. This was great substance that the Mosai told Abraham about before he died. Let's check it out. The judgment, Genesis 15 and verse 14. The judgment of the enemies of Abram's seed. That nation, Egypt, Egypt, Egypt. That nation whom they shall serve. Even the Egyptians will I judge. So who is he talking about judging? That they will come out with great uh, plunders, a great substance? Egypt will I judge. Genesis 15 and 14. These points at the plagues of Egypt by which the Most High not only constrained the Egyptians to release Israel, but punished them for all the hardship that they had put on Israel. We see that the creator was speaking of the Egyptian captivity and not the last captivity of Babylon, which is the present day captivity. Let's look at Genesis 15 and 14 one more time. God said to Abraham, know this, your descendants will live as outsiders and in a land not theirs. Egypt was not Israel's land. They will be enslaved and beaten down for 400 years. Then I will punish their slave masters. Here's the biggest problem my people got. When they see that 400 years, they automatically think this is the one they're talking about, the present day captivity. No, it's still talking about Egypt. Then I will punish their slave masters. Did he not punish Egyptians? Did he not bring 10 plagues upon them? Your offspring will march out of their loaded with plunder, but not you, Abram. You will you will have a long and full life and die a good and peaceful death. Not y'all listen closely. Not until the fourth generation will your descendants return here. How many generations have passed since the Exodus? Far more than four generations have passed, which means he cannot be speaking about our present day Babylon. Here's why our people can't see what I'm showing. Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 7 to 9. But the people of Israel are not willing to listen to you because they are not willing to listen to me. For all the Israelites are hardened and obstinate, but I will make you as unyielding and hardened as they are. I will make your forehead like the hardest stone, harder than flint. Do not be afraid of them or terrified by them, though they are a rebellious people. That's why they can't see. Right now, those Babylonian countries are under judgment. The food is poison. The water is poison. The air is poison. The soil is poison. The United States is being invaded by millions of illegal immigrants, which is a direct threat to every one of you. Rapists, murderers, drug cartels, terrorists are all flowing through the open borders. So you think you're safe? Shalom.